we don't want to be yoking people with what our definition of success is to us, right? So we want to be provocative and ask questions and be Socratic and unearth what the vision story is for them. Like, what are their goals? Like, so just like a coach does that for a coaching client, a great doctor does that for the patient sitting in front of them. We said, hey, this is going to be about preaching what you practice. I love the flip on that, which is preach what you practice. So practice what you preach is what we did, but would also preach what you practice. In other words, um, make sure you're walking it out. Hello and welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franson. What's up, Remarkables? Welcome to another episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. I'm Dr. Stephen Franson. And I'm Dr. Pete Camiolo. <laughs> I'm glad you're there, Pete. <laughs> I thought I lost you. <laughs> I love that dramatic pause. All right, gang. So uh, we are stoked as always to be back in the studio and to be banging out a few episodes of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. We love to do this. This is very much a grounding mechanism for us. Uh, you know, I've said this before that this is like the workshop is for you in your practice or it always was for me. And I know that's true for you, Dr. Pete. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, you know, we've shared before that the the workshop was our opportunity to, to really have a release for all of the stuff that we had stored up during the week, good and bad. <laughs> so it's like, this is our platform. This is a place where we have, we have a voice where we get to reach out and help people specifically and directly through the messages that we share. Right. So I like to say that, you know, you don't have a workshop so that you can build your practice. Right. So God gives you a practice. You, you have a platform to share the message. Right. So it's like, you got to think about it that way. And that's certainly the way we think about this podcast. So we love reaching out there into the, uh, into the chiropractic universe. And, um, and hopefully something that we say today will be cathartic for you. Something that we say today will be an inflection point for you, for your career and for chiropractic. So we're excited as always. I'm a little extra stoked today because I'm fresh out of the Atlantic Ocean. It's September. We've got hurricanes spinning up the coast. And as much as we don't want destruction or death and damage for anybody uh, south of us, we love when those things come spinning up the coast because it just means days and days of surf. And what a great way to start the day, jump in the ocean at sunrise, have some fun, have some laughs. I was out there surfing with my boy, Dr. Brett Racine, one of our great uh, TRP docs, uh, just Brett, if you listen, man, that was just awesome. He was killing it today. Uh, it was just so much fun. We're just charging waves, uh, getting some vitamin fun, some vitamin F, some vitamin C, SEA into the bloodstream. Uh, and so energized for our conversation today, Dr. Pete, uh, cause we're going to talk about practice and what we preach. We're going to give you guys a look behind the curtain, you know, coming fresh off of our TRP coaches training summit that we hosted here in beautiful New Hampshire last weekend. Dr. Pete, as always, it was awesome to be with you in person, man. We just have to do that more often. It was a huge win for me. Uh, definitely a win of the year uh, was being able to, to do that, to gather with you and the coaches uh, together, uh, to be in an environment where we were able to focus on how we can get better at what we do. And, you know, we take it very seriously what we do. It's a great privilege and an honor for us to be able to um, be, be coaches, to work with chiropractors in one of the four seasons of the, their journey, whether you're in a launch season or a build season or a scale season or an exit season. We recognize the sanctity of each season and the significance of it and the great honor and privilege it, privilege it is to come alongside of of you. And we take that very seriously. I know for me, it's something I take very seriously. And um, I recognize the, the weight, the weightiness of each season and, and, and the story and, and your story and your vision story and the tension between the past, the present and the future. And so we game together because we recognize that, you know what, what got us to where we are now is not going to take us to where we want to go next. And so we come together and with an eye on ultimately, and we continue to train. And, you know, Dr. Steven, I love when we we said, hey, this is going to be about preaching what you practice. I love the, 
I love the flip on that, which is um, practice what uh, practice what you preach, what you practice. So practice what you preach is what we did, but would also preach what you practice. In other words, um, make sure you're walking it out. Make sure you're living it out. Make sure you're doing what you say to do. And so this is as much a practice what you preach as it is a preach what you practice that, you know, we, we know that this is something we have to do. We have to continue to train. We have to continue to work on um, how we can help chiropractors and chiropractic in this day and age, in this time, in this point in history, in the history of the profession of chiropractic and, and where mankind is at and where the world is at and where people are at. And, and so we come together because it's important that we continue to stay on the, on the front, on the cutting edge. And I walked away with an image. I, I, I have, I visualize things a lot and I have visualizing things that happen, whether it might be on the plane, it could be in my sleep. It could be in the morning when I'm meditating. And it was a tip of a spear. And what I saw, Dr. Steven, was I saw that we are charging into uncharted territory. And in order to go into that uncharted territory, to take the territory, you have to have you, you have to be equipped with the right weapons to be able to navigate or tools to be able to navigate, whether it's weapons or tools or both, because you're going into uncharted territory. And I see that what we do when we come together is we are going ahead so that we can help the next come behind and we're clearing the pathway. And so I'm, I'm excited because I know what we are doing is we're preparing for 2024 and 2025 because we know, Hey, we're going to be prepared for what's coming next. And how do we continue to stay ready and prepared for the, the, the growth that's coming and the opportunities that are coming and the challenges that are coming and and also how to continue to navigate where we are now. So Dr. Steven, it was such an enriching time. And I know we're going to talk about some of the nuances and some of the experiences we had, which is so powerful, but ultimately that's what it's about, Dr. Steven. And for me, it was just energizing to be able to, to be together, break bread together, not just train together, but just be together. You know, the power of community and the power of relationships and uh, just so powerful to have that time. So um, definitely energized coming into this meeting, uh, no doubt. Yeah. So I'm not going to like try to leave this so people will figure out what do we mean when we say practice what you preach and preach what you practice, right? So um, we run our organization much like we are teaching and telling you guys to run yours, right? So we know that the highest and best use of our time, energy, focus, and money, our limited resources is spent on developing our team. And guess what? We're part of the team, right? So you as a leader, you're part of the team. Don't think of it's me and my team, right? So you're on the team. And to train and develop and equip your people is the highest leverage point that you have with your team, right? So when we talk about scalability and we talk about durability and we talk about sustainability and we, we talk about optionality, right? So all of these things, they are the fruit of training and developing your people, right? So if you're, if you're ever, you know, bumping against the containers of the four walls of your physical space, your brick and mortar, your process, your procedures, you're you're feeling capacity blocks, you're feeling overwhelmed. You're feeling like, you know, your cup is spilling over, not in the way you want it to. Like, it's like, if you feel like you've got this, the tyranny of busyness, so you got to stop and just ask yourself, it's like, okay, so where am I under leveraging training and developing my people, right? So I need some help. And right? so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you uh, to build a world-class team requires that you have a strong training process and a s- incredible, remarkable training culture, right? So that is, th- those are the keys, guys. Systems, team, and training, right? So it's just like, this is what it takes to create scalability and durability. And if you do not surrender to this, you have a job. You own a job, you don't own a business, right? So, and what I recognize, you know, as the leader of this organization, what an honor and a privilege and just an opportunity to practice what I preach and recognize, you know, we've got what 12, 14 um, uh, coaches when you consider, you know, all of our DC coaches, our office manager coaches, our CEO coaches, like across the board, you know, and at the end of the day, in order for us to protect the purity of our system, of the remarkable practice system, to prevent drift, just like you must in your business. You have to get together and train and training is not meeting. Remember the difference between training and meetings is you in training, you role play, right? So, and if you do not role play, guess what? You just had another meeting, right? So, and most of us need fewer meetings 
and more trainings, right? So the if you feel like you're needing more and more and more meetings, you're probably playing problem whack-a-mole. Most of those problems would probably be, you know, um, avoidable if you were training more, right? So ultimately bringing the tribe together, bringing the coaches together, not only did we have an awesome time, not only was it a time for bonding, getting to know each other better, strengthening the bonds of our of our team, you know, breaking bread, <laughs> spending time. It was so awesome to have a party at the house. Uh, you know, of course, you know, we're staying up too late. We're eating too much. We're drinking too much and just having a blast, right? So that that's just, you know, part of the tribal experience of being a human being. We're pack animals, right? So, but you know what? We're also first ones in the gym, right? So we're in the hell barn having an atrocious, I mean, awesome workout and then jumping into the cold plunge uh, and really stretching ourselves. They were so fun to see some people who had the first time getting in the cold plunge, man, this is all of this is meant to be a fully immersive experience, both virtually and actually. And it's a massive reset and a recharge and making sure that everybody is on track and on path for the next iteration of this business. I want to double click on something you said, which was uh, the fruit. You talked about how scalability and durability are the fruit of training with your team. And really it's the fruit of three things. It's the systems, it's the team, and it's training. And if you look at the fruit right now in your business and your life, and you're not satisfied with the fruit, if it's, if the fruit has, uh, if it's uh, maybe early stage, it's not really ripe into the point of ready for picking. Uh, that could be a situation where, hey, we're still very early on in this process. We haven't adopted, you know, really great systems yet. We haven't integrated that yet. Our systems need some uh, some tweaking. They need some optimization going on. Or our team, we're lacking team, or we're not quite quite where we need to be with team. Or maybe you have have uh, a team but and systems, but you just don't have training. You have stopped training. You don't have that culture. Um, it's like the three legs of the stool. You, you, um, the results that you want is when you do these three things at the same time over time. So it's ultimately, you know, having a remarkable team, having remarkable training process and culture and having remarkable systems. And when you come together and you have those three, you can't help but want to train more because you recognize that we have a train, we get, we train. We have this awesome team and we have systems that we need to keep working on. And it's when you do those three things or have those three things at the same time, over time, that's where scalability and then durability live. And so as a CEO of, of your business, you have to think about it just like the three legs of the stool for your patients getting the results that they want is that for our business to get the results that we want, we take those three things and we bring them together and that's where the results live. And so if you have a great team, but you don't have the systems, then you're not going to be able to get the results you want. You have a great system, but you don't train and you've got a great team. You're not going to get the results that you want. And so Dr. Steven, what I, what I love about what we did was we were hungry for this. I mean, it was almost like all of us were coming into this room. Just, we were so ready for it after a whole year it's like, hey, we're ready for this. And we can't wait till next year's Coaches Summit when we get to do it again. It's going to be amazing to come together. We're going to be so ready for that. And so, um, you know, it goes back to the A players will not tolerate not being trained. You know, A players, they 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 require a training culture. And that A player, that first A player starts with you. And like you said, Dr. Steven, it's you are on the team. You're a member of the team. And so we put ourselves, each one of us goes into this immersive environment to train, to role play on how do we, how do we run a better mastermind? How do we work with doctors who are struggling with fill in the blank issue or challenge? How do we handle, um, you know, bringing on associates? How do we handle when we're having issues, you know, with our office manager what do you do when you are just launching into your business and what's the first thing you need to do? And you know, what, what about exit? And I'm, I'm in an emergency exit situation. How do I handle that? I mean, if you knew that, if you knew the list of things that we had to train on and focus on and work through, uh, it, it's a long list. And so we, we have a lot, we have a lot that we trained on and there's so much more to go, Dr. Steven, because we recognize that, you know what, there's uh, there's a lot of work to be done uh, in this great profession. It's a support you CEOs and your, and your, your staff, your teams, um, 
you know, moving forward. So Dr. Steven, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm convicted even more now than I was even before Yes, even before. Uh, about the significance that. Yeah. So I want to make this really practical, right? So, and you know, um, our, the, the spirit of this podcast is to be really transparent, to be as, as transparent as we can be. Right. So I don't want you guys to have to figure things out. And I, I, w- I don't want you to miss the parallel tracks that we're all on. Cause remember, you know, we're leaders running organizations, just like you, we're in this with you. Okay. We're not coming from the mountaintop. Right. So we're, we're, we're telling you is we, we might be ahead of you on the climb up that mountain. And we're going to share with you uh, the, the right path to take and to keep you from misstepping, et cetera. Right. So if we can compress time for you and you save you some of the brain damage that, you know, that we experienced in our journey. Right. So that that's the, the spirit of this podcast, but I just want to make sure that you're, you're clear on the fact that we're running a parallel track. And whereas, you know, we have doctors that we coach who are in the four seasons of the chiropractic career. They're in launch, they're in build, they're in scale, they're in exit. Those are different doctors and they're at different stages of their path and their career, right? So, and we are the shepherds that come alongside of the hero that's on their journey. And there's conversations that we're having with them that are relevant to where they are on their journey. Right. So if you're in launch, you've got your own set of challenges. Right. So you get your own goals and you got your own barriers that you're trying to get around obstacles you try to overcome. Right. So that's one conversation. Build is a different conversation. Doctors in build, you know, for the most of them, they're like, I want to grow. I want to go and grow. I want to drive, I want to drive more service. I want to drive more revenues and of course more profit. I'm I'm interested in just growing and going, getting my systems down, attraction, conversion, retention, team building, et cetera. That's different. They have different goals and different challenges than the doctors that are in scale, who are trying to create scalability and durability, especially, right? So it's like, that's a different conversation. They have different goals. You know, yes, they want to be more productive and more profitable, but they also want more time freedom. They want to get their lives back, right? So that's, that's a different conversation. And the doctors that are coming up into exit, they're trying to make a graceful and profitable exit. That's a totally different conversation. So you can see that just like we have different conversations with different avatars or groups of people on different stages of their journey with different goals, different challenges, just like you do, right? So when a patient walks into your office, you got people that are initial intensive care. You got people that are in corrective care. You got people that are in in wellness care or people that are maintenance care. They're on their own journey, right? So, and they're on different stages of their journey. And you need to be acutely aware of that. There's a lot of training that goes into recognizing that you're, again, the shepherd. They are the hero on their journey. We have to come alongside them and recognize they have goals and challenges at each stage of the journey. And you have to develop a fluency in that, right? So you've got to make sure that you are thinking about the patient, your consumer, your customer, your practice member, not about yourself. Like it's a, it takes incredible discipline to be able to not think about self when you're a leader. You need to think about who am I leading, right? And see it and look ahead for them. That's why you're the visionary, right? You've got to be the person that looks down the road, right? So just like parenting a child, it's like, listen, I know what's coming. <laughs> it's like, like I help you see around corners. I'm going to say no for now. And that's going to be unpopular, right? So, but you know what? It's because I love you and I have, you know, my job is to guide you in this process, right? So, you know, let you struggle, let you fail, but, you know, ultimately, ultimately succeed because of those trials, right? Same thing with a patient, same thing with a coaching client, right? So the parallels are rich and deep, Dr. Pete. And honestly, I can't get enough of it. Yeah, I love how you made it, you know, practical. And and one of my highlights of our time was actually going through and identifying, you know, what are the challenges in each season? And, you know, recognizing, you know, what those challenges are, what those, um, you know, what those, those um, opportunities are, um, you know, recognizing what the conversation is that's happening and knowing what the goals are, you know, and, and being able to help a doctor who is in a season um, of launch or build or scale or exit to be able to successfully, more successfully achieve their goals. And, you know, for us, you know, we have, we're in it with you, you know, so we're able to speak with a level of insight that is, is helpful because we come with the Intel that we get from you, you know, as we get to work with you and your teams, whether we're working with COOs or office managers or back office CAs or associate doctors or CEOs, 
in scale or doctors in build or launch. I mean, we, we are gathering, um, we're learning so much from you and from helping you and from helping the doctors that are, we get to work with grow. I mean, I think Dr. Steven in the last year we had, I don't know the number, but how many doctors break through the seven figure mark for the first time. It was incredible you know, just to see the growth that's happening, you know, for the doctors that we get to work with in the organization. I, I can answer that question for you, Dr. Pete. Yeah. We had, we had 56 chiropractic teams, 56 businesses break through not only the seven figure mark, but they're either the seven figure mark for the first time or their next seven figure mark, right? right. So going from 1 million to 2 million, 2 million to three, three to four, th five to six, all the way up to our largest practice last year hit 36 million for the first time. Right. So it's like we we've we had 56 unique practices for the first time or for their next seven figure threshold breakthrough, just going and growing. Yeah. So I mean, for us to be able to journey with you, to be a part of that, and to have some level of being instrumental in helping you do that. It's just a, it's a huge honor and privilege, but we also understand the tension and the weight of that. And so we come together as coaches to train on, on those things, on how to help you do that and do that better. And so we look at this as, you know, I always said, and I say this to anybody who I've worked with, Hey, put me on your accountability chart because I want to be held accountable to helping you steer this ship. If you're the CEO and we're working together, put me on the accountability chart, put TRP on the accountability chart, because we are accountable to helping you execute your vision in a more remarkable way, help you have a more remarkable practice and a more, more remarkable life and have that, that not instead of one or the other, that they don't compete, but complement and not only complement, but integrate. And so creating an environment, we are accountable. So Dr. Steven, I see that it says, Hey, we're accountable to the doctors that, that hire us that make an investment in themselves to work with us to help them achieve their outcomes, the goals that they want. Your outcomes is on my, that's on my scorecard. You achieving your vision is on my scorecard, making sure you're hitting your base case, best case goals, and you're working and moving in that direction and not going down some chasing shiny object trail and six months later, come back thinking, well, what was that all about? But staying the course and discerning what's important now, what's important next, what's important ultimately. Dr. Steven, this is what we're committed to as, as coaches. And so we train so that we can continue to come alongside of you and continue to serve and support you in achieving your goals and achieving your vision. Dr. Steven, that's a great responsibility and we take it very seriously. So you, you just dropped two or three frameworks there that I just want to make sure that people didn't miss, right? So number one, I love the, the in, intentional um, use of the word your. Okay. So when, you, when, when doctor, when you're out there listening right now, when you hear us say your, we're talking to you right now, right? So we're talking to you, the DC, who is either the CEO self identifies as a CEO or as an aspiring CEO in the chiropractic profession, right? We're talking about you right now. So our responsibility as coaches and as teachers, as leaders is to challenge you to get clarity around your vision story for what success looks like. Right. So because it's your vision, right, this is your walk. This is your path. And it's about your goals. Right. So we're not projecting anything on you. We're just helping you unearth what God has seeded in you as a vision for what are you called to do? Like what level of service exactly? What does that look like to you? That's a really important. Number one. Number two was the framework of last now, next, and ultimately, those are time frameworks that we use inside the Remarkable CEO program. And we've done that in such a way to help contextualize things because it can be overwhelming and it can feel nebulous if we just talk about the past and the future, right? So we want to talk about the past. That's last. We want to talk about the future. That's next and ultimately. And we want to talk about the now, right? The brutal facts associated with now. Those, those are critical frameworks. And when you start using them, it'll help you those constructs will help you codify those visions. And then you can say, well, where's the gap between where I am now, where I want to be three years from now, ultimately, and where do I need to go next to make that three-year view a reality, right? So that context is critically important for us as coaches to be able to speak to you so that not only can we stretch you and challenge you to create a clear vision of the future that you can move towards, because remember, we're pushed by our purpose, but we're pulled by our vision. 
right? So we, where, where there is no vision that people perish, you have to have a vision of where are you going, right? That's going to energize all of this, okay? But to be relevant, we need to talk to, about, talk to you about now to next, okay? So this conversation came up in our training uh, last weekend with the coaches. And as I, I had an ear for listening to the coaches as they were training and coaching and role playing. And what I recognized was it was very easy to slip into the state where we were assuming or projecting our personal current challenges in our businesses onto the person that we were talking to. <laughs> so don't worry, I'm going to land this plane. If you do that, what ends up happening is you're making assumptions that a person shows up with a certain set of goals, their vision, you're assuming their vision which means you're assuming what's most important to them and what does success look like to them. Number one, that's selfish. Number two, it's ineffective, right? We don't want to be yoking people with what our definition of success is to us, right? So we want to be provocative and ask questions and be Socratic and unearth what the vision story is for them. Like, what are their goals? Like, so just like a coach does that for a coaching client, a great doctor does that for the patient sitting in front of them, okay? So it's really important that you challenge a person with the truth of how the body really works and how the body really heals and what their expectations should be for their health outcomes and experiences ultimately. Let's get you back to wellness, okay? You were designed to be healthy. Your body's intelligent. Sickness is abnormal. Healthy is normal, right? So to teach a person a truth and help them see a three-year view, ultimately, I want to get back to wellness, right? So that is the ultimate view for them, right? So that long-range goal, but where they are now is probably toxic, deficient, subluxated, and vaccinated. This is probably a person that is really suffering and struggling and so far away from health right now that they've almost given up on the opportunity or possibility of health and wellness. So don't lose sight of that, okay? So remember when you're sitting in front of that person that God's trusted you with, that patient needs you to contextually be relevant to where they are right now. Right. So you don't lose sight of that. Right. So to a person, I was talking to Dr. Brett about this this morning. If you're if you're a coach and we're talking to a potential coaching client who's in build and you're talking to them about, oh, man, I know you're probably overwhelmed and all you're interested in clawing back some time freedom again and just becoming more profitable. And that person on the other side who's in build, they're probably at a place where they're like, give me those problems. I wish I were overwhelmed. I wish I were too busy. I would love to feel too busy. <laughs> give me those problems to solve. Right now, I am desperately trying to build my practice. Don't forget that that's probably the season that they're in right now. You need to be listening for that. And you would be so, you would be as irrelevant as the, as the doctor talking to a person who's got sciatica firing down their leg, who's dragged themselves into your practice, hoping that you could help them deal with the brutal facts of where they are right now with their health so derailed. Doctor, I'm talking to you right now. Just make sure that as much as it's important that we paint the future of what's possible for them, tell them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But that starts with the reality of where they are now and what needs to change over the next 12 months to make that, that three-year view even a possibility. So docs, as you're listening to Dr. Steven, um, you know, we're speaking to you. I'm going to go circle all the way back to the beginning. This is about practicing what you preach. And this is just a friendly nudge and reminder to each one of us, all of us collectively that we're all in the game and we need to continue to show up ready to continue to work on ourselves and commit to that and hold our team accountable as well as we are holding ourselves accountable to continue to train. We're letting you know that we're committed. We're letting you know that we're, we're accountable and we're telling you that, and we want you to hold us accountable. And the reality is as Dr. Steven, if you're watching this, wearing his all in t-shirt is that's our commitment and our theme for 2023. So if you're listening to this in real time, when it releases, it's 2023 and we're, we are all in and we have committed to that. And we ask you simply to go all in. And when you do, and you embrace uh, the culture of training, the process of training, you will recognize that you are in the business of saving lives. And when your business is good, everybody wins. So train and train like lives depend on it because they do. Please stick around for more business insights from this week's bonus interview with our remarkable success partner dedicated to helping you more successfully help more people. Enjoy.
All right, Remarkable CEO. So I am pumped up because I'm in the studio today with a friend of mine, Joseph Hagen. He and I are both uh, Jersey guys, actually. Uh, he's still there in one of my favorite places to to visit. Uh, and uh, I am here in Nashville in my studio, but we're in the studio today. And uh, we're going to have a great conversation about money, about wealth, and uh, some modern day talk. That's right. Uh, I'm here with Joseph uh, Hagen, one of our remarkable success partners with Endow Nation. Hey, Joseph, say hello to everybody. Hey, folks. Live from New Jersey. It took me 30 years to admit that I'm from New Jersey, but here I am. With and, uh, and, and, and hey, fun fact. Tell yeah. him, so his, his office... His office where he now runs his company actually once was a chiropractic office. Is that true? Yeah. Getting people aligned with Web3, AI, crypto is awesome because I'm sitting in an office that was a chiropractor office. And I found that to be quite fortuitous and ironic at the same time. Exactly. And here we are, a bunch of chiropractors listening to you talking about how to do what you are going to teach us to do, to do today. So I know that Endow Nation uh, is a company that birthed. And so talk, talk to us a little about who you are, what you're up to. A lot of people don't know who you are. They maybe never heard of you before. Don't know anything about Endow Nation. Don't know any of these things. So let's start at the beginning. And then we're going we're gonna to go full speed. We're going to get right into We're going to talk about banks. We're going to talk about diversity. We're going to talk about crypto. We're going to talk about Web3. We've got a lot of things to cover in this segment. So uh, Joe, I'm going to turn it over to you. Cool. So, yeah. So for starters, and thank you, Dr. Pete, so much for having me on as a guest with some, you know, awesome, you know, people, you know, in your community. Um, I love your events. I always learn a lot and meet great people. Um, and Donation is really not a company. It's decentralized like Bitcoin is. It's a community. It's a free community. It's invite only. We want to make sure we have, you know, people that are, you know, busy professionals, like-minded that are going to learn and contribute, you know, at their own pace. But it's really out there learning about crypto, about Web3, about AI, and all the rapid changes that it's really difficult for the average person, let alone a busy professional like you chiropractors, to keep up with. I mean, every single day, there is new stuff being created that never existed in mankind before, especially when it relates to AI and even Web3. And what we want to do is Make sure that our community really has the skill set to navigate Web3, right? You and I talked about it a little bit. You don't realize what's happening already um, that you need to learn. You know, you don't know what you don't know. And with AI, man, things are being created every single day, like I said, that are making your tech so much more automated that there are some things you probably don't need to worry about and a lot of things you do. Um, so we created that as kind of just a place. It's a community on Discord, right, which is a free server. Um, and it was created by Wealth Colony, you know, my company, uh, just because we found there were so many people that were just like, wait, what? What is that? So it's just really a form, you know, for us to go out there. And I got to tell you, Pete, I believe now more than ever, especially over the last weekend and the last week, people need a reliable source of intel, not some biased, politically motivated or otherwise motivated, you know, bit of information given to you, you know, through whether it's, you know, social media or on TV. Uh, but you have a source, a community that's really rooted in truth and transparency. So that's kind of, you know, end down nation and, 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 and why we started it. Because, you know, Wealth Colony, I started, well, let me put it this way. I got out to Wall Street in 1989. Okay, I'm 55. And I remember as a rookie, it was before PCs went mainstream and then the internet. And I literally had the first five years of my career that had to explain to people why stocks or something that you should consider for your portfolio as an asset, pros and cons, why you should consider it. And then, you know, as I'm into my 20th year, it's like, you know, I'm telling my kid about who's going to Villanova, really bright kid. I'm telling him about a couple of ideas like NVIDIA, gaming chips, going to be autonomous vehicles using them. And then he's like, yeah, dad, yeah, I got Robin Hood and I already got these stocks and uh, I don't pay any commission, right? So like the transformation was wild, but I got introduced to Bitcoin, fortunately, I was blessed very early uh, in 2011, 2012, and it was under a dollar and I didn't buy any and I watched it go to a thousand. And I just literally, all of my mentors that are in the space, everything they kind of predicted, like kind of has happened, including Bitcoin going to another level, et cetera. And it was kind of the first time I heard the term 
when I started, I started a light going mining pool with Wealth Colony in 2013, at the end of 2013. So for 2014, for the full year. And I said, okay, my partners are going to know how we, we're doing all the work to make this happen. We're all investing our own money into it as well. How are we getting paid? And his response was, Hagen, F cash, I want coin. I'm like, wait, what? Like I grew up watching like Gordon Gecko, Greed is Good and, and, and Jack Welch at GE saying cash is king. What do you mean F cash? I want coin. At the end of three years, we mined Litecoin for a full year in 2014. I was fortunate to be able to make a million dollars in it. But for two years, we did nothing. We twiddled our thumbs and did nothing. It Litecoin was not available in the US yet. So you had to mine it. So we missed Bitcoin. I missed Bitcoin. He didn't, right? So I said, okay, I got rid of my knowingness. So we did that. And I looked back at what he meant, right? And I said, if I would have taken cash, Pete, every, and let's say I didn't spend it on something or invested on something, right? Each dollar is worth 94 cents three years later when we cashed out a Litecoin. And each Litecoin was up 100X. I'm like, oh, that's why he didn't want cash. And as you go further and further in 2021, when Bitcoin was breaking 20,000, when you're a billionaire and you have that much cash, well, you don't want to sit in cash because it's going to be worth less. So you want something that's going to hedge inflation. Thus, they were all getting involved in Bitcoin. They realized at that point, the risk was not being in Bitcoin as opposed to being in it. So the good news, if anyone chased Bitcoin and paid 40, 50, 60,000 and you're still holding it, it's still really early. Regulation hasn't even happened. There's so much still that's going to be built on Bitcoin and and all these assets are going to get tokenized and go on the blockchain. So you're really early. But yeah, that's why we started in Donation because a lot of people are just too busy. They got their head down and we, we kind of want to share with them, you know, what's been going on, you know. And I don't know, Pete, if you've been watching about, obviously, the headlines, unless you're under a rock, right, with the banks. Yeah. You were saying, you know, if, and, and again, if you follow Joseph Hagen on LinkedIn, I put a lot of these articles out there. So it's not like this is revisionist history and I'm, saying anything like, you know, Monday morning quarterback, of course I knew this was going to happen. You know, it, the, do, the, the world is de-dollarizing while inflation is raging at home. So you need some kind of hedge against inflation. And I've read where the rupee, the Indian dollar may be replacing in a lot of areas like, you know, the standard. Um, and then you have Silicon Valley Bank. And, you know, I've listened to analysts say five years ago, they looked at some of these banks' balance sheets and said, I don't know how to find any real equity in this, you know? And so if you have analysts that can't find real equity in banks and then interest rates start getting risen like that, then their balance sheets uh -oh, are upside down. And then there's a run in the bank. And then you got to worry as an American and say, wait a second, I thought we went through this in 2008. And by the way, all the kryptonites, crypto heads, talking heads, they predicted banks would fail again because the government's going to keep printing money and they're going to keep getting away with it and they'll get bailed out, et cetera. But, um, you know, it happened again. And you're, you know, I, I imagine like the horror and the terror of some of the people that over the weekend that had to meet payroll. They have families that depend on the money that's in the bank. Well, we've been preaching for a while now at End Down Nation, like what they're preaching now, let me put it to you this way. Diversification, don't just have one bank. We agree. We're not only saying, don't take your money out of the bank. I have like five bank accounts, right? But not only have um, your diversification, not all your eggs in one basket in one bank, but we, we go a step further and say, you should have some in self-sovereign money. And Dow just happens to be one that we love for a lot of reasons, but the idea of owning your own money, Dr. Pete used to be a little bit like, what, what do you mean by that? And they get it now. They're like, you know, not your, not your keys, not your crypto. FTX showed that. Well, it's happening in the banks too with your money. So the idea of owning your own money and understanding what's happening with the banks. Um, if nothing else, you should have a good filter to discuss and good sources of information. Whether it's other members of the community, nobody has an ax to grind, nobody's selling anything. It really is a good source and we get a lot of good feedback from it, right? I don't know if you have any questions on the banks. No, yeah, it's powerful. So you, you, so you saw a need, you formed the community. This is a free community and donation really is what birth from all the work that you've been doing. So I want you to talk a little bit about, um, yeah, just unpack a little bit more about, you know, the self-sovereign money, owning your own money. And then also want to hear 
um also about web three uh today on this yeah. uh in this segment i'd like to hear about those two things and i know we can go to following joseph hagan on linkedin you can find out a lot of these things that that you're going to talk about if they want to go deeper they can find you there and, and start getting in there but talk 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 about those two things yeah let, 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 if i could let me talk about the power of end down nation and just having an honest discussion right about what's yep. real and and one of the leaders that i have onero right is a is a, is a company Help support the technology and marketing of Endow, which is a decentralized open source the DAO. It's a excuse me, decentralized autonomous organization. We just kind of help support it. So I'm not making any money on Endow Nation. People join it. There's a fee. We just want that honest discussion because I talk to some of the people that really are believers in Endow, and I've owned it for a year and a half, two years, and I continue to buy it. Um, every time I get more discretionary income and an opportunity, boom, I'm buying more. But it is like the community of Bitcoin hodlers, H-O-L-D-L-E-R-S. The story is the guy that's famous on Bitcoin who wrote the two famous rules of how to trade Bitcoin. Rule number one, never sell you Bitcoin. Rule number two, never sell you Bitcoin. And he said, I'm a hodler to the end. And he might have been drinking or something, but he misspelt it. But that typo created a whole hodler. It's like if you Google it, you'll see hodlers of Bitcoin. And it was just people who, who don't, they, they've been in so early. And so when I got turned on to Bitcoin, Pete, I said, all right, if I would have bought it at five in the baseball dugout, when a guy moved into town and became my friend and it was like connected to these people that were just another level, I would have bought it at five. I would have sold it in a hundred, if that. Done a dance around the campfire like I was the greatest trader in the world. Then I went to a thousand right after that. Then it went to 70,000. So like the deeper discussion with the folks from MIT and University of Chicago and Princeton that I kept having is like, okay, this is what I need to share with my ecosystem because I lucked into this. And I was able to make a lot of money early on, but again, we're, we're, we're just beginning. And I'm looking at the media and what really prompted me in 2023 to start is I have, I have literally made money looking at Jim Cramer on TV like he's Costanza, just do the opposite. And earlier this year, an ETF started that literally shorts his picks and they have a good track record. And I'm like, I don't know how the guy's not in jail. He's on TV saying things. But what really got my craw that got me to start in donation is January 3rd. He literally, now I'm watching and I'm talking to everybody about retail, Fidelity and Schwab, and the biggest institutions, Citadel and Virtue, collaborated to start an opportunity where your money could stay there and you could put it out on their exchange and you could trade crypto. They were watching too many assets go to Coinbase and Kraken and elsewhere. They had to get into the game and they can't wait for regulation. Bitcoin, right? $56 trillion, some crazy number, 56 billion from BlackRock went into it. Now they have 10 trillion, they're the largest asset manager in the world, and they're not waiting. So, all these things that you know just from reading or Googling, and then here's Kramer on TV telling the average person, say you're a busy chiropractor, you get home, you know, I'm going to listen to Kramer. And, he, and, and, and I'm really nervous because my crypto's down, and I'm not, look, I'm not zooming out and looking at the big picture. And realizing Web3, AI, all this stuff's about to happen, and all our rails are about to go on crypto. And I see him saying, if you own crypto, you're an idiot. He literally said it on January 3rd on TV. He's like, you know, I'm not going to say idiot. And then he's looking at it. He goes, you know what? If you own Bitcoin, I like going, yeah, you are an idiot. And I didn't go to college, you're an idiot, to be an idiot. So if you own crypto, you're an idiot. So I'd sell it. That's number one. I called everyone I knew. I put it on LinkedIn. I said, I don't care what your favorite crypto is. If you don't have one, pick Bitcoin or Ethereum or both. And I would buy it with whatever loose money you have right now because Jim Cramer just told everyone they're an idiot and they should sell it. I've never had a more of a contrarian um, you know, point of view like hit me in the face um, other than in the past when Jim Cramer said something stupid like that. In two weeks, Bitcoin was up 40% from under 16,000 to 22, 23,000. And it's up over 70% since he said that. But what people don't realize, right, is in the same breath, later that night or later that segment or the next night, he was talking about Silicon Valley Bank at $320 a share. And there was a famous short, raging, raging something uh, that put out a short recommendation on Silicon Valley Bank, talked about that balance sheet. And he came out and said, all these concerns are overblown and I buy, 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 buy Silicon Valley Bank at 320 so not only is Bitcoin gone up 320%, but Silicon Valley Bank is pretty much the shareholders or SOL, right? And 
I mean, maybe it's a dollar or two and they get some kind of scraps, but you know, the depositors, most of which are thankfully being bailed out, but the shareholders are out. And if imagine you did, if, imagine if you listened to them and sold Bitcoin and bought that, oh my God, like mentally, that's a hard pill to swallow. So there's just a lot of that going around. A lot of people don't understand or, or, or know what to make or what they're reading. So we just want to be that source of truth. And so we started um, End Down Nation, just A, as a filter for the media, but also, Dr. Pete, you're talking about Web3. Right. And basically, let me put it to you this way, um, as I was explaining it before. Telephone one and telephone two was, you know, you go, right. Hello, Mr. Jones, it's me. Hey, Pete, um, I want to talk to you about my back is hurt. And, you know, I'm going to tell you some intimate stuff about, you know, me as a patient. Other people can listen on that line. Right. And it's mm-hmm. operator or sister. So the operator could probably listen, but you need an operator to do that. You and I started a Zoom call. Where you needed an operator. So what people don't realize is right now, web one and web two, web one is user ID and password. And web two is I'm going to use social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, whatever to log in. Both of them are operator assisted. Someone else is collecting all your data. Someone else is making all, your, all the money on your data. And it's not that secure at all. Okay. Well, if you use a digital wallet, you could store your crypto off an exchange and be safe. You could store your NFTs. You can do a lot of things. But ultimately, you can navigate everything out there on the blockchain and internet without having to remember a bunch of passwords, completely secure. And nobody, nobody's collecting your data. It's your data, right? So it's, it's literally like, I know there was a circular dial when Direct, Connect, Direct Dial first came out. But yep. in my LinkedIn, there's a YouTube that I put in there about people resisting this because they knew this didn't matter that people could listen to their line or an operator they resisted the change of a direct dial meanwhile i just want to talk to dr pete about my problems like how i need to be aligned and how i may want to cry on your shoulder and now everybody really is going to listen to that or it's not safe well web3 is nothing more than you know using wallet connect technology and it's direct connect and you should be doing it like right now and if not soon, because so many advances are going to be in this area personally, in your personal life and business. So we do like free workshops and, you know, just coach people on how to do those things. And, you know, the response is always just one of tremendous gratitude. And it's really eye opening for them. Like, wow, I yeah. didn't even realize this. It's like, that's why we started in donation. It's huge. Well, I, I appreciate you. I mean, I'm just as I'm listening, I'm just learning so much and you're you're speaking um, it's very clear that you're on the cutting edge that you have, you know, obviously taken steps you've had in this world, you've had wins, you know, you've learned, but you're also willing to teach. And I love that about you, that you're a teacher, you've created this platform in this space for people to come and to learn so they can, um, they can have great success in their life too. So the best way for people to learn more, to get in touch with you, to get plugged in, Give them some direction here before we wrap up. Uh, what's the best next steps for our listeners to uh, to learn more, or do more, or get more involved? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Email me at joe at wealthcolony.com and I could send you out an invite to just bring you in for free to end donation um, where there's, it's like a hotel room, right? You come in, there's a whole bunch, it's a hotel lobby. You come in, it's free. There's a whole bunch of free stuff you can learn from. Watch conversations and learn from them. Engage in conversations as much as you want. Um, if there's things in the VIP room you want to go to, well, we can show you how to do that too. You may not want to, and that's fine. There's no expectation that you spend or invest anything. Just really want to learn, want to get out involved, you know, or go to Joseph Hagen on LinkedIn and, and connect. Because I'll say one last thing if I could. AI yep. is not stopping. And right now, Web3 is one thing, but AI is creating things that are new every single day. And what happens when AI starts connecting with live data feeds? Well, AI is going to talk to AI, and it's not going to be Skynet from Terminator, right? But it's going to be them for, you know, producing a lot of stuff that you're going to want efficiently. But then AI is going to connect to the financial systems, and AI will not understand what we do now in traditional banking. It won't understand bailouts. It won't understand printing more money. It won't understand people waiting in line and wires. It'll only understand math security and 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 really math and algorithms and just like the the only way the financial markets are going to go ahead are on crypto rails and so you need to kind of understand what the rules of the game are at a bare minimum awesome well you heard it here 
to learn more, uh, go to Joe Hagen, Joseph Hagen at LinkedIn. Also send him an email at joe at wealthcolony.com and he'll get you an invite into Endow Nation. Hey, Joe, thanks for being a remarkable success partner. Thank you for supporting chiropractic, chiropractors. And thank you for being just an incredible part of our remarkable practice family. For all you who are listening, thanks for tuning in. This has been another episode, an incredible interview with one of our remarkable success partners, Joe Hagan and Endow Nation. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to tune in next week for the next episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Until then, God bless and have a remarkable week. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable. Remarkable.